Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my November haul. It's going to include a couple of books that John got last month too. First of all though, I kind of wanted to apologize for the lighting lately. It's been, I, I have not been able to get myself to film before it has been dark, but it's been getting dark at like five o'clock in the evening and usually, I mean usually I film on weekends, but sometimes I don't get home until five, so like we're just gonna make do with what we have. It's fine, whatever. So the first book that John got this month, last month, was The Call of the Bone Ships by R.J. Barker. I don't really know much about this. I know that it's the sequel to The Bone Ships, also obviously by R.J. Barker, um, and it involves magic and pirates. He already did a review of The Bone Ships, so I will link that video up above. But he's already done with this, or almost done with this. He's already almost done with this, so I'm sure a review of this will be coming, but that is the first book that he got last month. The next book John got last month was The Tropic of Serpents by Marie Brennan, I think. Yeah. So this book is a, also a sequel to, I believe it's called A Natural History of Dragons. Again, he already did a video with a review for that, so if you're interested at all, uh, I will link that video up above it's the same video. I will- so you can just click on the link that I already posted and see what he thought of the first book. As for the books that I got last month, we hit up our local Half Price Books and they had a lot of really interesting reads. So the first one that I grabbed was Black Wolves by Kate Elliott. I honestly don't know anything about this. I've seen Kate Elliott's name pop up across like several book searches that I've done. So all I know about this one is that there is an exiled captain and he failed, I think, in protecting the king, but he is coming back to help the king's son, I guess, many years later, and that is all I know about this one, but I am really interested in picking it up. In that same trip to Half Price Books, I picked up The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell. This is the sequel to The Last Magician. The Last Magician was really great. It involves time travel and, like, a bubble around New York City that people who use magic cannot cross or they will die. I don't know what's going on with my hair here, guys. I'm sorry. One of the main characters travels back to, I think, the 1920s? Um, I'm not really 100% sure. I, I enjoyed it. I think I gave it three or four stars. I had been waiting to pick up The Devil's Thief until I could find it in paperback, but I really just haven't been able to find it anywhere, and I couldn't argue with the price at half-price books, so here we are. I really want to get to this sometime in 2021 because I know that I enjoyed the entire world and magical concept of the first one, so I'm excited to see how the story continues in this one. My next two books I'll talk about together just because they're part of the same series. So as you guys, if you've been watching this channel for a while, as you may know, I've been trying to read my way through the Stormlight Archive, and because of that I got both Oathbringer and Rhythm of War. Uh, both of these were part of like a buy two get one free deal on Amazon and one other book which I will hold up in a minute. But yeah, I got Oathbringer, I got Rhythm of War. I'm gonna put them down because they're heavy. They're books three and four of the Stormlight Archive. I just finished Words of Radiance last month and I really really enjoyed it. I'm currently in the middle of Warbreaker so I'm trying to finish that. I am really enjoying that too for the record so that I can move on to Oathbringer finally and hopefully catch up to the Stormlight Archive. I feel like I've been reading Sanderson books for months and I guess I have. But it's been a long journey. We're almost to the end. The third book that I got in that buy two get one free deal was The Rise of Kyoshi by FCE. We're big Avatar fans in this house and we've watched Avatar and we've watched Korra multiple times, so I really wanted to get my hands on a copy of this. Uh, I've read a couple of the comics and I really enjoyed them and I would love to see more about Kyoshi's story, so I can't wait to read this and learn more about her. We actually took a second trip to that Half Price bookstore last month, and in that trip I got The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Uh, this is going to be a movie, I think in like January or February, with Tom Holland in it, and I love Tom Holland. I adore Tom Holland. He's my favorite human being on this planet. So I really wanted to read the book before I saw the movie, and all that I know about this is I believe it's on like an, a different planet in which the men are like all present but for some reason the women have all disappeared and ember hit the tripod it's fine um and the men can like hear noise which are like the thoughts of other people and apparently animals near them 
Um, I started this, it wasn't really gripping me right away, I think I listened to it on audiobook and I wasn't a huge fan of the narrator, maybe I'll give it another try, but I do have a physical copy now and I'd like to pick that up hopefully this month, maybe early next month, we'll see how it goes. So I'm really excited to get to this. And then the last book that I picked up in that same Half Price Books trip was Malice by John Gwynn. John and I were really both interested in reading this. Um, I think I really got this more for me though, he has his own very large TBR. But I have been really interested, I've been seeing The Faithful and the Fallen, right? I've been seeing The Faithful and the Fallen literally everywhere on booktube lately. I heard, I want to say, Jessie from The Bookish Mom talk about the fact that there are animal companions, and I am a sucker for animal companions in any book, but especially epic fantasies, so I can't wait. I've been eyeing this since I picked it up a couple of weeks ago. I literally cannot wait to get my hands on it, and I honestly think that I might pick it up as soon as I finish Warbreaker instead of reading Oathbringer, but we'll see. Other than that, I have literally no idea what it's about, but I will have to let you guys know if I put it in my wrap-up. The very last book that I got in the month of November was The Awakening by Nora Roberts. I have made it no secret on this channel that I am a huge Nora Roberts fan, regardless of the amount of hate that she gets. I have loved everything this woman has ever written. I have pretty much my entire romance novel shelf on the very top is dedicated Mostly to her books. She has written a lot of books. The woman puts out like four a year. If you're in the know about what went down on Twitter, or not on Twitter, um, on her personal blog about somebody criticizing her for putting, or for having such a long time in between books in a series, that just happened recently and my mind is still blown by it, but whatever. It was in regards to this book. I can't wait to pick this up. I know that it involves dragons, and I'm pretty sure that it involves Celtic mythology of some kind. Both things are immediate, like, must-buys for me. So that's all I really know about this, but it is Nora Roberts, so I know that there's going to be a great romance in it as well, and I've been really feeling some fantasy romance lately, so I think I might try and pick this up this month. We shall see. I lied, I thought that that was the last book that I had gotten in November, but I forgot that I did manage to pick up A Sky Beyond the Storm, which is by Saba Tahir, and is the fourth and final book in the Ember in the Ashes series. It has been long awaited. I have only made it to book two. I really wanted to get to book three this month, but that just didn't seem to happen. Hopefully I will get to it soon so that I can pick this up and see how it ends. Essentially, An Ember in the Ashes follows, I think their names are Laia? and Elias? I want to say his name is Elias. I'm not 100% sure. She is like of a group of people that are slaves. He is from a group of people that are very militaristic Roman emperor kind of style. Um, her brother goes missing and she pretends to be a slave in the military academy, I guess you could say, to try and find him and rescue him. And in so doing, she puts herself in grave danger and she puts herself under the scrutiny of Elias, who is a member of this academy, and these factions are very much so against each other. So it's it's not really an enemies to lovers, because um, he's just like such a good person, but there is a little bit of tension there because of that, and the, the world that Saba Tahir made in An Ember in the Ashes is so amazing. I don't know what I was expecting when I picked it up, but I was not expecting to be so incredibly gripped by the entire story, by the entire mythology that she created. Everything about that entire world was amazing and I blew through the first two books and then for some reason I just haven't picked up the third one yet. I would say probably I'm scared for it to end, but now that there's an actual conclusion I don't really have to worry about there being any cliffhangers, I hope, so I will be much more likely to pick this up sooner, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And that is it for all of the books that I picked up in November. I hope you guys enjoyed my book haul. I will talk to you in my next video. I hope you're having a great night or day, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.